What's going on team? I am Coach Roundtree. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I want to first say Happy New Year. If this is your first time on my channel, on this channel I post interview tips and career advice to help you elevate your game. Wow, 2022. I wanted to first, again, just say thank you. I have over 220 subscribers as of the filming of this video. I just want to thank everyone for rocking with me over the last year. Well, I really just wanted to start this channel to just share what I've learned. I've interviewed with some great companies and had some tremendous opportunities. And what I'm realizing is that a lot of folks may or may not have that information. So I wanted to create this space to share. So this is not a scripted video. I want to just take some time to just reflect. And I have about three or the four different topics that I want to cover during this, this video. But again, first, thank you. If you have not yet, please give me that thumbs up and subscribe to this video. This allows YouTube to allow my content to show up higher in the rankings so that people that like yourself can find this content. Um, so again, thank you, thank you, thank you. I uh, wanted to recap. My um, 2022 was an interesting year for my channel. My best performing video, I'll drop it here, was um, a negotiating video. How to negotiate your job offer um, and it's something that I'm really proud of. It just hit 10,000 views, 10,000 views on that video. And it tells me that I got something there, that there needs to be more focus, uh, attention in that area. And that's what I'm gonna talk about, what you can expect next from this channel. I'm always open to feedback. If you've ever left a comment, you will know in 2022, I've always responded because I care about the information that I'm sharing. I know it's very important to people. So. What you can expect next from my channel, there are five areas where I'm really going to focus. The first area is interview prep. A lot of those star demos. Tell me about a time when you failed. Tell me about a time when your work was criticized. I'm going to really double click on that because I think those um, it's very important to, to have those examples as you prepare for your interview. So that's going to continue. We're going to dig more into that. Product management. So if you don't know, my day job, I'm a senior product manager at a Fortune 500 company. So I'm actively working with engineers to help solve problems for customers. And it's one of the most in-demand jobs and most desirable jobs in all of tech. So that's what I do on my day job. I want to really peel back the curtain to tell more about what it takes to be an effective product manager. What are trends? Because I know a lot of people want to get into product and it's something that I want to kind of demystify that you have to have a computer science degree. You have to be an engineer or you have to know how to code. I don't have any of those skill sets, but I'm able to be very effective and to really drive a lot of business value and ultimately delight our customers. That's the really the goal of being a product manager. So you're going to get more gems on product management. Don't worry, I got you. The other area that I'm going to really dive into for 2023 is just negotiating skills. It's something that I have really focused on the last five years, and I've been able to build very strong negotiating skills. So I'm going to have multiple series on negotiating, some role playing, and just give you some of that game that is not candidly taught in school, but you need that to make sure that the job offer you accept today should set you up your earning power for future opportunities. And I want you to maximize the bag. So negotiating, you're going to get more of that. The last two areas are going to be, I test, I experiment a little bit in 2022, but this concept of just motivation and just mindset, what I'm realizing is a lot of the things I've been very blessed to achieve have been a lot, have started all up here. The mindset of how I'm approaching the game every day. And I definitely want to bring that to my channel. Last one uh, that I'm really gonna focus on, I started doing this a little bit in 2022, just travel. My wife and I, our love language is travel. We love to travel. If things get crazy in our normal day to day, the first thing we're gonna think about is searching for flights. Like what, yo, she'll send me a screenshot saying, hey, this flight's looking good to Aruba. Like, hey, we've never been to Denver. So I've started to dabble in some of that on the channel, but I think it's important to not just show all interview interview, because I'm gonna be honest, the job search, the interview prep, it can be exhausting at times. It, it's a lot of energy that you're putting into um, trying to get that 
job and it could consume you. So my intent with the, the travel is to kind of show you how, yes, once you land a job, like what, what are you investing in? What are some things that are, impassion, that are passionate for my wife and I? And that's really where I start to test them that, to that a little bit. And it's been really cool to get some of the feedback from, from customers or um, from viewers that are just seeing uh, some of that travel stuff. So those are my five areas. I'm actually gonna touch on some of those during this video. And one last thing, I wanna spend more time together. Most of my content, 99% of the content that I dropped in 2022 was really shorts. I leaned heavily into shorts because I wanted to give you a topic in 60 seconds or less. I just wanted to go one, two, three, four, five, hope this helps. And while that is that is that has really um, helped me build the channel to date, I think there's an opportunity to take some of those concepts, like we talked about, interview prep, product management, negotiating, mindset, motivation, travel, and hacks, and really spend more time because some of those topics I'm gonna be honest with you. You you really can't cover that in a um, in depth in a quick sixty second video or, or forty five seconds or even a fifteen second. <clears throat> so expect a little bit more. My goal is to, every week is to drop a thirty minute video on in one of those five areas I just discussed, and then I'll probably chop it down to give you like the big gems and like a ten second video, and then I'll maybe cut it down deeper into a shorts. So depending on where you are in your interview, your product management drive to get there, negotiating mindset, you'll have multiple opportunities to consume that content because you might like, man, you might say to yourself, coach, that negotiating, how to negotiate a job offer. Um, that was a really cool video but I need a little bit more. What about this situation? What about that? Like, I wanna give you a little bit more game, so expect longer form content in 2023, and this is the first one, so I'm definitely gonna tap it. All right, um, the last thing I'll say for, every year I try to start with a word that's going to help me and guide me throughout the year. My wife and I are big on goal setting. We always set up a chat on our iPhones and we start dropping some of our goals. But my, my, um, my word for 2023 is elevate. In each area of my life, I wanna see not just step changes, but a leap in terms of how I'm showing up as a husband, how I'm delivering um, results on my job, how I'm building my businesses. I do consider this channel a business. It's something that I want to, to continue to grow because I see this untapped, uh, potential in the niche that I'm in. And, and 2020, 2022 really showed me that, hey, this is something that people need. And I want to continue to be one of the many voices to share that. <clears throat> so elevating there, elevating in my faith. I am a person of faith. That's the reason why I've been able to achieve the things I've had in my life to date. So how do I continue to leap in that and leap in my faith, my fitness, one of the one of the things I was shout out to my fellas that are checking this out. Got to go to the doctor. Quick plug: every November I have my annual physical, and in the black community, we typically don't black men are, are less likely to go to the doctor. Fellas, get your annual checkup for your wife, for your partner, for your kids. Um, one of the things my doctor said, bro, you need to drink more water. So what am I doing? This is the jug that I'm drinking every day. And I'm going to uh, post some hacks or shorts. I got this from Amazon. I'll drop a link below. But I'm drinking more water because my doctor said I need to. I need to drink more water uh, based on some of the this, some of my test results. So, fellas, if you look like me, walk like me, talk like me, go ahead and set up your annual physical, especially as you approach that 40, which I'm approaching. Don't, don't let the the crazy wave and the arm um, and if they fool you, I'm approaching 40. So your checkups are gonna be really important and even just prostate. As you get older, you're more susceptible to prostate cancer. So get your checkup, uh, just a quick plug, but elevate is my word for 2023. And uh, in each area of my life, I'm looking to make those leaps. All right, 
So I've talked about just my intro. Happy New Year again. This is the Jordan year 23, 2023. And now I want to dive into uh, some of the, the four topics that I have today. All right. The first topic we're going to jump in for 2023 is salary negotiations. And again, this is not a scripted video. I just wanted to drop some gems on just the topic of salary negotiation. When I think about salary negotiation, the thing that really tripped me up early in my career is number one, I didn't negotiate. In my head, the thing was search for a job, apply for the job, interview for the job, accept the job. I did this from the time I started my professional career in 2007 all the way to 2019. I searched for the job, applied for the job, interviewed for the job, accept the job. Now what's missing? The fourth area, negotiate the job. I had those mixed out. It should be negotiate and then accept. So if you're watching this video <clears throat> and you've never heard that concept, it's the five areas of finding a job. You search for the job on LinkedIn, Glassdoor, Indeed, um, their career page. You apply for the job with your resume. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Then you interview for the job. You prepare, you work on your star stories, your demos. Once then you receive the job offer, which you negotiate, you always ask for more money and then you accept the job. That's the play, that's the top five. Now, if you haven't heard that concept, I hope this catches you early in your career. And if you're later in your career, you still can get the money that you left on the table. But that is the five steps of the hiring process. And that's something that I stumbled upon. I candidly left a lot of money on the table, <clears throat> excuse me, earlier in my career, but never again. I got all I got it all back. All right, now let's talk about some of the mistakes to avoid when you're negotiating. So I'm going to say it again. I'm going to keep repeating it. Search for the job. Apply for the job. Interview for the job. Get the job offer and negotiate. Accept the job offer. One of the biggest things, <laughs> mistakes that I used to make is I would accept the job and then try to negotiate. Bro, you cannot do that. So the first mistake, mistake to avoid is don't accept the offer. You have to counter that first. So here's how it typically works. Going back to it, I, I found the job on LinkedIn. I applied for the job on LinkedIn. Recruiter hits me up, says, hey, Coach Roundtree, I like your profile. Let's have a phone screen. I go through the phone screen. It's typically 30 minutes. And in that interview, I'm, I'm asking questions about the role. I'm giving them my salary expectations, which I'll touch on here next. Let me make a note. And then it's typically 30 minutes. It's with the recruiter. The recruiter is trying to get data. Is Marcus the right fit for this role that I can bring and start the interview loop or the interview process? So they get the data they need. They bring move me forward in the process. All right, cool. Now I start meeting with people that I'm going to work with. I'll meet, meet with the hiring manager. Then I'll meet with her counterparts in marketing, in strategy, in um, operations, business development. So I'm meeting all these different people and see if I can get a thumbs up. Thumbs up from marketing, thumbs up from strategy, thumbs up from business development, thumbs up from operations. And then once I go through the whole loop, it's, it's typically... Um, what I'm seeing today in the job market, there's typically the, the phone screen, then there's a communication with the hiring manager, and then you're meeting with stakeholders. And that's typically, it could be a panel where it's a, a full round and you're on the Zoom or in person and you're meeting with four or five different people. Or it's a um, it's an all day loop where you may have four interviews in one day. You're meeting with back to back to back. And then that's considered the interview loop. So expect multiple rounds. I don't want you to get discouraged. And now, because of the current environment in 2023, you're having the phone screen 
hiring manager screen. Then you're doing the interview loop, a panel, or you're doing like back to back to back. And then they're also adding a case study and a presentation. So, and here's why. Because it can be frustrating as a candidate. Like, yo, bro, why am I going on seven interviews, 10 interviews for a role? Well, depending on the level and based on the current environment, if they hire the wrong person, it's a huge expense. So they're not leaving anything to chance in this market. So expect a pretty long interview process. And uh, that's why it's important to interview with multiple companies. Not every company is going to give you one, two, three, four, five. But for some of these big dog jobs, I'm talking about these six figure jobs, the 150K and above with sign on bonus, with annual bonus, with stock. They're not playing around these days. They're going to go through a full loop to make sure that she is the right person for this job. Everybody that they're going to work with has signed off on this hire. So the interview process is uh, pretty drawn out. But once you get the offer, you go through the loop, you get the job offer. The recruiter calls you and says, hey, Marcus, I'm excited. We call this the, the news. I got the call with the news. I, I got some good news for you. We're excited to extend you the offer. Um, here are the terms. Sometimes they'll tell you the, the numbers on them. Do you have a few minutes to talk? And the recruiter will say, okay, well, you're, you can expect a base salary. I'm making up numbers. A base salary of $100,000, or they may say a base salary of $75,000. That includes a 10% bonus, and you also will be eligible for stock. Now, you may not get all of that. We'll talk about that in the detail. We'll talk about compensation packages. Packages. Let's talk about that. And then salary negotiations. You may not get all those buckets. But please do not be like me. i never forget 2013, I got the news call. Recruiter called me. I was at my current job at the time, literally walking the sales floor. And she called me from this Fortune 500, Fortune 50 company saying, hey, I got the good news for you. We're offering you this job. Your base salary is going to be $50, $54,000, which at the time was like, it was $14,000 more than what I was making. So I'm like, yo, I done made $14,000 more. I was at $40,000 in that job. Now you're telling me I can make fifty-four. dollars I don't have to work weekends. I'm in a corporate space. On the phone, I said, I accept, I accept, I accept. I'm excited. Hung up the phone, called my family and friends. Yo, I'm going to this big job. And so after that, my mentor said, well, what's the compensation? I said, um, that's 54,000. He said, mm, that seems pretty low. By the time he said that, I had already accepted the job offer, bro. I had already signed, I was so excited to leave that current job to see this elevation that I just signed the offer, didn't negotiate. That was in 2013, left that money on. And then, <laughs> so what the day of my orientation this was so stupid. I literally, I said, hey, I'd like to, I talked to my recruiter. I was like, hey, I want to meet with you. I was like, hey, I wanted to know if I can negotiate more money. And she, I remember her face like, what? You've already accepted the job offer. But I had my whole game was off. I didn't know, no one taught me that. And I and I didn't even, after, she said, obviously, no, the team is not able to move forward, which, uh, duh, you already accepted the offer. You can't negotiate afterwards. But that was in 2013. And I didn't even think about it. I just kept going throughout my career until 2018. I was like, I got to figure this out. All right. Now, I want to touch on so mistakes to avoid. Don't accept the offer when you get the good news call. This is how you should respond. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm excited for this role. If, could you please forward me the job offer? I would love to talk it over with my family and friends and to make a decision. I'm excited to really join this organization. The reason why you want it via email, going back to negotiating, is because when you get the offer via email, let's say, let's go back to my old school example. This company sends me the email, here's your job offer. Instead of me accepting, which I did, and responding, I went, printed it out, signed my name, and scanned it, and emailed it back to them. What I should have did is said, all right, they're offering me 54000 Let me see if this 
is a lowball job offer. So I take the title and the company, I go to glassdoor.com and I look at the average base salary and I compare it to what they offer me. And I say, hmm, okay. Then I go to linkedin.com slash salary, put in the title of the company and see if it's, it's 54,000, the number. Okay, then I go to Indeed. I take, I do my homework. I don't just accept the job offer, bro. And in this example, if I had done that, I probably would have saw that for that product marketing specialist, the base salary probably should have been 65,000. And what would I have done if I know what I know now, I would have emailed back the recruiter, didn't sign the, the offer, and said, hey, in my email, I would use that video that, that, that has 10,000 views. I, I break down the ease concept. I'm excited about this opportunity. Here is, um, I want to start negotiating. Here's my salary ask. Um, this is based on my research. And then again, the E would be, I'm excited again. Um, so uh, again, I'll link that below, but I would basically structure a counter offer and say, hey, based on my research, I want to request a base salary of $65,000. I'm excited about this opportunity. Here's what I've seen on Glassdoor, Indeed, and LinkedIn, and put the ball back in their court. Now, every time you do that, they may not give you the 65, but they may give you 60. It's still $6,000 more than um, what you initially got. But the thing is, bro, you always have to counter the job offer. I recommend that you ask for 10 to 20% more and I'll link below a course I created last year that I'm going to really continue to add different volumes, but it's called the Career Pivot. And I give you an email sample template. I give you webinars on how to search for a job. There's a PowerPoint slide deck, actually two, that break down the do's and don'ts of negotiating. I think it's very helpful. It's actually $9.99 for 10 bucks. You have access to this information that could get you another $10,000 in compensation. Um, and like, you're, you might be asking, coach, why is it so low? Why is that price point so low? Because I don't believe in gatekeeping. I don't think this information is something that sh I should charge you what it's worth, which is $1,000. I'm gonna say it's $9.99 so that you can get this information at an extremely low price point. Jay-Z said, I'm trying to give you a million dollars worth of game for $9.99. And $9.99 was a title subscription. Title is a streaming service. And that album, 444, if you haven't listened to it, go back. It's aging very well. I'm a huge Jay-Z fan. I love music. That's something I wanted to also share. Music is a huge part of my life. Hip-hop, my first cassette tape in 95 was Biggie Smalls, One More Chance, the remix. And I stood outside my grandmother's porch all day trying to memorize those those lines first things first i pop up you know so i'm a huge hip-hop head but yeah for 9.99 i'm gonna give you this game so that you can send a counter email and negotiate and not be like i was in 2013. all right i'm gonna move on from negotiating i'm expect more i have a lot to share i want to talk about next your resume Ah, your resume. When I think about a resume, your resume is a living, breathing document. And I want to just give you just a few gems of why it's so important and also what's happening in the market. So resume, or if you're watching from all, all different parts of the world, or your CV is really just a two-page document, max, first gem. If you have a five-page resume with every job you've ever listed, that's a mistake. Two pages is the max for your resume. And it's a living, breathing document that really sh it shows your career progression. It also documents what are some of your goals, your experience, your education. And there's an area what I think a lot of people miss out on is your community impact, your passions, and really your superpowers. That's something that I think is missing from a lot of resumes I receive. But let's talk about the format. And I want to use just an acronym um, or just four areas of the resume format. The first area is your profile. 
Your profile is a short paragraph, maybe one to two sentences of who you are in the marketplace. Like for example, my, my profile says, product leader with over 15 years of experience, possessing the ability to drive business value by partnering with stakeholders. My leadership style is a player coach. I'm the one that's rolling up their sleeves as necessary to jump in to help the team accomplish the goal, but also giving them the autonomy to really achieve the things that they set up as well. So that's just a blurb. It's probably a little bit more crisp, but off the dome, that's my profile. And why do I have that? Because I want to let you know I'm a product leader, that I have 15 years of experience, that I solve problems by partnering, collaborating with others, that my leadership style is a player coach. So if you hire me, I'm a team player, but I'm also willing to lead as necessary, lead when necessary, and just my approach to working with people. That's my profile section. Some people might say, um, like if I'm applying for a marketing manager job or role, I would have in my profile section, marketing manager with eight years of experience. And why is that important? Because in the, in the job description, in the um, responsibility section, they're likely having um, the requirements for the job. They may say you might, you must have eight years of experience. So I put eight years of experience on my resume. And the reason why that eight years of experience is important because if, as you're reading my resume and you're looking at the job responsibilities or description, does she have eight years of experience? Does she, he have eight years of experience? They're looking and you're checking boxes in each of these sections. The second area is experience. So I see a lot of people, especially if you're early in your career and you don't have a lot of experience, um, your, your, your education, which is the fourth section, will, will be at the top. So I wanna make sure that folks that don't be, don't be discouraged if you don't have a lot of experience Education can be at the top. And in fact, I've heard from recruiters that if you have your education at the top of your resume, that's the indicator that you're early in your career and that's okay. But if you're, if you're in mid or senior level in your career, the structure should be profile, education. What have you done? Then it should be your passions or superpowers. And then the last section should be your education. Education is last if you're mid-career, senior and above. If you're entry level and you maybe you've only had internships or you've just had, you're trying to get your first role, it's okay to have profile, then education, and then you might have your experience, it might, which might be, might be pretty low at that point, but then also have an interest section. What are you interested in? Have you volunteered? What are you passionate about? So think about that and um, we'll dive more into the resume format as this year starts to roll out because I know getting your resume sharp, keeping it updated is really important. A few other things about your resume. I mentioned living, breathing document. If you're working now and you have multiple years of experience, don't do what some people do or what I did early in my career. I would wait to update my resume whenever I was looking for a job. Nah, nah, bro, because you'll forget. So here's a strategy. Create a Word doc or um, a Google doc. And on your job that you're working today, as you get wins, as you launch new features, if you're in the product management space, as you deliver a national marketing campaign, as you get recognized, jot those things down in that Google doc. Add those into that, um, that Apple, that, that chat or that note on your iPhone and keep a tally of the wins, cuz. Like, don't, don't wait until two years later that you want a new job and you're like, what did I do? Hmm. Another trick I've seen people do is on your LinkedIn profile, update the wins but don't let um, don't notify your network. There's a feature on LinkedIn where you can 
say, make sure that everyone sees when I update my profile, or you can take that off. So that on your LinkedIn profile, you keep adding your wins. And that's important because LinkedIn is the number one game in town. Like that's where everything is, is, is happening. So you want to translate things from your resume to your LinkedIn and add those bullet points. So don't wait until you want you feel like, like, oh, man, I think I might need to move to a new role and then start updating your resume. You, you've forgotten that. Man. Another option is within your outlook in your job, what you could do is create a folder. And when you get recognized, send it to that folder. Will you deliver a new feature, campaign, um, stop or solve an issue or get recognized? Add it to that outlook folder. So when it's time for you to update your resume, you go through that, you go to the Outlook folder and you start updating your resume. Um, another thing that you can do is when you're having your connects with your leadership, like for performance reviews, when you get that feedback, put it in that Outlook folder, send a copy to yourself. And again, update. The, the, the goal here, family, is you don't want to wait until you need a job to have to update your resume. So we'll talk more. And last thing, I'm giving you, boy, this is... I'm giving you some gems. Let's say you, you're in college, so you're watching this video. You've never written a resume in your entire life. You have a project or your teacher says, yeah, bring your resume to review next week. Like no one tells you how to write a resume. But if you go to Google Docs, D-O-C-S, Google Docs, if you have a Gmail account, you can set one up. And if you click on Google Docs, the first, what well, is like different categories. You can have a blank canvas where you can write wherever you want. Like the second or third format is a resume. They already break it into that framework where it's profile, experience, education. Everything I just said, Google Docs has that for free. Free for the free. So yes, if you need a resume, you don't know where to start, go to Google Docs. This is a free service. Click on that resume format and it'll break it down and just start filling in the information. Like that's something you don't have to pay for the format. I want to make sure you have that. All right. We talked about salary. We talked about resume. I want to talk two more areas. I may not get to the fourth one. Let's talk about job search. Um, I posted a short recently why you should apply for the job. And when you're searching for a new job, the most important thing is right here. My OG, uh, Marshawn Lynn said, get your mentals and your chickens. Your mindset about applying for the job has to be sharp, mainly because it's hard, especially now in 2023, this job market is so dynamic. You have massive layoffs in tech, then you have hiring and hospitality, retail, um, you have all these different pockets where big tech is being slammed because interest rates are keep continue to rise and it's impacting their financials and they have to reduce costs to get in line with their revenue. But there are other places that need jobs. And then you have big layoffs at um, Amazon, um, Microsoft, um, you name it, some of, some of these big dogs, Meta. So you have this influx of tech talent that's rotating into other sectors. So my point is this market is dynamic. Control what you can control. Here's what you can control. I call it three a day. Whenever I was looking for a job, I applied for three jobs per day. That was the baseline. At the end of the day, how many jobs did I apply for? I applied for three jobs. That was my play back in the day when I was looking for a job. So I want you to run that as well, three a day. How do you apply for three jobs a day? Hmm, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the plug family. Focus your efforts on LinkedIn. Here's why. There are over 500 million active users on LinkedIn. 90% of the Fortune 500 source talent on LinkedIn. If you've ever looked at anyone's profile, even looked at my profile, you'll see that button that says, LinkedIn helped me find this job. That button or feature is happening and it's, it's so prevalent because LinkedIn is where all the players are there. And what I mean by that, recruiters, recruiters are now going to LinkedIn first. The role that I accepted and I'm currently working now, 
That was sourced through LinkedIn. The recruiter hit me up and basically was saying, hey, with your background aligns to this role. And I went through the interview process. I was fortunate to get the offer. But LinkedIn is where they're going fishing for, for talent. Because if you think about a careers page, how many applications do you think they get on a careers page? Like, um, say, if on um, the google.com slash careers or um, microsoft.com slash careers. Thousands. And not everybody that applies on the career page is qualified. So what's happening is recruiters are saying, bro, I need to fill this job, but how am I going to find this talent? So they go to LinkedIn.com, say they're hiring a marketing manager position. What she's doing is saying, marketing managers, five years of experience. That's what she's entering into the search engine at LinkedIn. And then she hits that button, search, and all the talent is pulling up. And she's going, all right, Susan, let me click on her profile. Okay, let me see. They're reviewing your digital resume on LinkedIn. That's why it's important to take those wins and document those from the Google Doc, from the iPhone chat, add them to your LinkedIn profile, which is your digital resume, because that's where they're going to fish for talent. But the job market is very, very um, dynamic right now. So I said three a day, apply for three jobs a day. Lean into LinkedIn. Last thing that I'll share on this topic is because LinkedIn is the new plug, all the players play there, what you want to make sure you do is position yourself as a thought leader. Write articles, comment on um, topics that you're passionate about are relevant to your job. Um, like, stay engaged. And the biggest thing that I will say is don't be a gatekeeper, bro. What is a gatekeeper? A gatekeeper is someone at company X when people reach out to you via DM and you never respond or you you act like you're going to respond and you never do, like that's bad karma. So if you're in a role and your DMs on LinkedIn are flooded and you don't even read them, you just delete them. Imagine when you were early in your career and you were trying to find a role and you saw someone at a certain level of success and you messaged them on LinkedIn and you got crickets. How did that make you feel? So, but now you're that person, you've reached that level, you're a director of marketing, you're, you're an SVP of strategy, you're a marketing manager or a senior product marketing manager, and you've, you've made it quote unquote, but you don't have the compassion to reach back and help someone else who just wants to understand what's it like to be a senior product marketing manager? How did you get to director of VP? And you don't respond because you're too busy or or you feel threatened that they may that candidate might go after your role. Blow your bro, you are blocking your blessings. So don't be a gatekeeper on LinkedIn. If someone reaches out to me on LinkedIn, I respond to every single person. It may not be immediately, sometimes it is. But if you're in a position of authority, you're a hiring manager, and you don't feel like the need to to respond and you're gatekeeping information, bro, that's whack. I'm going to say it like it is. It's whack. And we need to stop this, especially when you think about diversity, think about black talent. Um, I believe that it's important for me to reach back and help others that look like me that want to get into the tech space. And that's why I also created this channel. All right. Last thing I want to talk about briefly, if you're interested in the tech space, product management is the end game. You say, coach, why? Why? Product management, first, what is product management? Product management is really the development and execution of new products within organizations that solve problems for customers and deliver business values. Give an example. This iPhone that I'm shooting this video on, there's a product manager at Apple. She developed the strategy. She partnered with different engineers to help build this hardware. There's probably another product manager that's dealing with the software and what she's doing as well is looking at different use cases or problems that iPhone users have either raised through surveys or customer research. 
and she's adding that software, those updates to iOS and collaborating with engineers as well as the business, think marketing managers, sales, finance, to deliver this iPhone experience that we all know and love. Why is product management the end game? Well, you don't have to code. You don't need a com computer science degree. You don't need um, to even have a degree in some situations, but you have to have the ability to collaborate, the ability to communicate clearly at multiple levels, the ability to unblock. You, you hear that phrase a lot, it's coined by Amazon. When I'm trying to make something happen and I hit a roadblock, how do I move around that? And how do I unblock the team so they can keep going and deliver um, that feature? Um, you have to be able to have executive presence. You're presenting to the big dogs. Yeah, you have to have prioritization. Everybody wants their thing. I need this right now. And they have a list of 10 to 20 things. How do you prioritize and say, you gave me a list of 10 things. First, let's take a step back. What problem are you trying to solve? Okay, that might that's going to influence how I tackle what you truly need. And things on your list may not be what you truly need because five out of seven, five of the 10 things don't solve a problem. Product management is all about solving problems. So you need unique skills. And the skills I just shared are not necessarily gathered through a computer science degree or being able to code. You have to be able to tell a story. And, and really the number one thing I will say is just, it's all about being the voice of the customer and solving what's truly important for the customer. So not only is product the way to go because um, you don't have to have the coding or computer science, but as a product manager, I can point to things that I've delivered value. I can say I delivered that and it's generating X dollars in EBIT or X dollars in revenue for the company. Not a lot of roles you can do that. When I was on the marketing side, I could tell you I dropped the campaign that went nationwide, but depending on the data that was available, it was hard for me to get to the ROI. And product, I can point to the ROI and justify the compensation, which where I want to go next. The base salary for a product manager uh, is around, it's over $125,000. So let me repeat that. The base salary for a product manager, according to Glassdoor.com, which has rated product manager as the top 10 role, one of the top 10 roles, it was number one, I believe, in 2021, is around $125,000. That's to get into the door. I've seen, as you grow as a product leader, there are product leaders at these big dog companies, think um, Meta, Google, Amazon, that are making millions of dollars per year that are making over five hundred thousand um, dollars so it's an extremely lucrative but extremely challenging role and competitive but none of those things i just said means it's impossible so laser focus on product management i'm going to give you more on this channel all right let me wrap up if it's your first time joining again thank you Please hit the thumbs up, subscribe. On this channel, I post interview tips and career advice to help you elevate your game, which is my word for 2023. I'm gonna drop some other products and services that I offer as an entrepreneur, but thank you for your support. If this was helpful, share it with someone else. And this is gonna be a great year. 2023 is gonna be a great year. Stay positive, protect your mentals and your chickens. Um, Great things are going to happen for you this year, but just stay focused. Hope this helps. I'll see you next time.